Uh, we're here at LA Comic Con talking to Chris Britton, who is Mr. Sinister from the 90s X-Men animated series. Hi, Chris. How are you doing today? Very well, thanks. Have you had a good show? It's been, been a lot of fun meeting a lot of fans and everything. Yep. It's, it's been busy. It's been uh, interesting and met some great people. Cool. Very cool. And you are an iconic villain in Mr. Sinister. <laughs> There's been no other iteration of Mr. Sinister that I really know of. How no. does it... How does it feel to kind of be the guy for a character like that? Well, privileged, really. I mean, uh, when we actually did the, the actual recordings, uh, I don't think we had any idea that it would become that. And, uh, you know, over time, it's, it's had very lasting value. And uh, a lot of fans still, you know, remember it as being iconic in their lives, the whole series and all, all the main characters. Yeah, and it's really lasted throughout time since since we watched it when we were kids. Me and Rachel, Rachel's behind the camera right now. She's uh, we've been big fans. You see, I have an X Men tattoo. It's one of my favorite, oh, uh, my goodness, yeah. one of my favorite uh, yeah. series ever. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like you got to be a villain. Like, how does it feel to be the bad guy? Does it make you? Does it make your performance different? Do you get to kind of go after things a little bit more, or? Do you kind of approach it the same way as any other character? Um, well, the, the important thing for any actor when you're doing a part like this or anything is you, you don't think of it in those terms. You think of the lines, what the lines mean, who you're speaking to, the intention of the lines and how they're written. Um, so you're focusing mainly on that. And once you've got the voice down, you know, which you, you know, I, I did during the audition, then you figure out, you know, what you're actually saying and to what character. And so right. that's what you focus on as an actor. Uh, and since the show obviously has lasted so long, what do you think is the staying power? Why is it staying around so long? Everybody's so in love with these characters. Well, I think uh, there's a lot of human elements to it, uh, even though the sort of uh, in the realm of uh, science fiction and you know hero uh, animation. There's, uh, you know, human qualities that everyone can relate to. Um, and, uh, you know, knowing Mr. Sinister's origins as a, uh, as a scientist, as a, as a doctor, and his desire for, you know, eliminating illness um, and everlasting life, etc. Um, you know, it adds a sort of a, a much more human element to him that uh, you wouldn't normally think would be there in a lot of uh, animated series. Very true. It was one of the more mature uh, series for kids, yeah. for sure, as an animated yeah, yeah. series. So yeah, it touched yeah. on a lot of different types of topics. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Adult topics, in a way. Uh, and I think that's what the creator, I think Larry uh, Houston, wanted. He wanted, you know... So you could revisit it as you got older and still find something of interest in it, something that would be of value as you, you know, as you aged out of the original series 25 years ago. Um, and so you could look at it again now if you're 25 years older and say, oh, well, that's interesting. I hadn't thought of that. Uh, of uh, when I originally saw it when I was, um, you know, 17 or 16 or 15. Yeah, yeah, very cool. Yeah, I think that's that's exactly why it's why it's lasted so long. Yeah. You can go back and yeah. look at a lot of those episodes and yeah. feel a lot of those same feelings, and maybe even more now that you're an adult and have had experiences that's and right. everything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and obviously now with social media, you guys get the feedback a lot more and all that stuff. How did it feel? back when you guys were making the show did you guys feel like you were making the difference or making a show that was special or was it did it take a while for you to kind of see what the impact was of the x-men series i think it took a while i i you know uh because mr sinister came into it a bit later um and he only did maybe 15 episodes something like that so from my perspective as an actor, I was just doing the job uh, and uh, doing this sort of new animated series. And it wasn't until later that you sort of realized the, the full sort of impact of it. Um, perhaps it was different for the other actors like Wolverine and uh, Beast and Rogue. But, uh, you know, I, that wasn't something that had uh, influence on me until much later. 
Well, thank you so much for giving us the time. I really appreciate You're it. Welcome. You were uh, obviously a great part of our childhood and a great part of like our lives watching this series. So thank you so much for giving us you're what welcome. you gave us. And you've had a, obviously a great long career. Do you have anything that you're promoting right now that you're working on? Um, well, I, I did another episode of Riverdale. I played Judge uh, Britton, as a matter of fact. They decided to call my character after me. Um, and, uh, you know, I still do theater, I still do television and film and uh, some animation. Uh, I did the uh, uh, more recent character in My Little Pony, Star Swirl the Bearded. Um, but we did see that on your IMDb and we were yeah. very excited <laughs> to hear about that character. We, we personally don't really watch My Little Pony, no. but hearing yeah. the, the name of that character was incredible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> No, he's a total opposite of Mr. Sinister, I can tell you. <laughs> for sure, for sure. Well, thank you very much for your time. Uh, and hopefully you've had a great con. Yeah. And uh, yeah, big thanks to Mr. Sinister right here. Great. Thank you.